Right, guys, we're picking up where the last tutorial left off, which was with, uh, with example four, where we were simplifying algebraic fractions. Now, this example was chosen because we're finally dealing with the division of a fraction. Now, ultimately, I know that there's one goal here. Because I can see that this is this fraction connected to this fraction multiplied by this fraction, if I can factorize each of those algebraic expressions, I will have one term over one term, and then I'm allowed to start simplifying. But first, before I even go anywhere, I've got to deal with this division. Now, I'm dividing by this fraction. It's got nothing to do with this fraction, and who cares about this fraction? I'm dividing by this middle fraction. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the previous tutorial, I know that there's this trick which is tip and times now as i've said before there's a very good mathematical reason why we can tip in times and that's the same as dividing but what this means is i'm allowed to multiply by this fraction as long as i switch it around so whatever was on the bottom of what i'm dividing by now goes to the top and whatever was on the top now goes to the bottom. But it only affects the fraction you're dividing by. So this last fraction, I was multiplying by that last fraction. So it stays exactly the same. And this first fraction, was it, it wasn't being divided by. It was the starting fraction. So I do nothing to it. Now as soon as I've done that, all I'm dealing with is I'm multiplying three fractions together. Which means if I can get one term over one term, I can simplify. So now that I've got that, my plan is to factorize each of these complicated algebraic expressions, and then I can start simplifying. So let's start. Let's start at the top here. Immediately I see that, I see a trinomial. Now, if you're not comfortable with trinomials, maybe start with all the other factorizing and come back to that. But this one's quite easy. The leading term is x squared, which means it must be x times x. The last number is 32. So these two numbers multiplied together must give me 32. So if I start thinking of factors of 32, I can think of 8 and 4. And that's about all I can think of at the moment. So why don't I try that? So if I have 8 and 4, and the middle has to be negative 12. Now 8 and 4 will give me 12, so I think I'm on the right track. But they both have to be negative in order to give me negative 12. Now let's check x squared, yes, minus 8x, minus 4x, will give me minus 12x, and negative times negative will give me positive 32, so I am right. Now, the bottom of this fraction was 8x, which is already one term, so we don't have to factorize. Next, x squared minus 16, I should recognize that immediately as the difference of two squares, so x minus 4, x plus 4. Let me check, because I made a mistake last time. x squared, yes. Plus 4x, minus 4x. That's why the signs have to be different, because that middle term cancels out. And then minus 16, so I am right. Now if I look at the bottom of that fraction, it's again a trinomial, but not too bad, because again it's x times x, which is relatively easy. Now what can give me 16? Factors of 16 would be... 8 and 2. Um, there's no way that 8 and 2 can add to give me 8, though. So that's definitely not going to be possible. What about 4 and 4? Those could add to give me 8. So I think it's 4 and 4. Now I need to get negative 8. So again, these should both be negative. Let me check. x squared. Yes. Minus 4x. Minus 4x will give me minus 8x. And plus 16. So I'm right. And last one, I'm multiplying by x squared minus 4x. Immediately, I see a common factor of x. So I'm left with x minus 4. Check x squared minus 4x. Good. Divided by, now, x minus 8. There's definitely not a common factor. It's definitely not a difference of two squares. Not a trinomial, and it's not grouping. So what can I do with x minus 8? Well, is there anything wrong with putting a bracket around it like that? Would it change the meaning? Absolutely not. And if I do that, I've now made it one term. Now, all I've got here is two brackets multiplied together, multiplied by two brackets multiplied together, multiplied by two terms multiplied 
two factors multiplied together. So the entire top of this fraction is now one term, and the entire bottom of this fraction is now one term, which means I can simplify. I am allowed to cancel any bracket as long as the identical bracket is on the bottom. So x minus 4 and x minus 4. x minus 8, x minus 8. x minus 4, x minus 4. x and x, which means at the top I'm left with x minus 4, x, oh sorry, x plus 4, and x minus 4. And at the bottom I'm simply left with 8. Now, I cannot go and cancel 8 and 4 and say 4 goes into 8 twice. Absolutely not, because we've spoken about this before. You either cancel an entire bracket or you don't cancel anything at all. And so I can't see anything else common to cancel. And so that's about it. Now, should we multiply out this top to give me x squared and it'll be x squared minus 16? It doesn't really matter. That won't be any simpler than leaving the answer just like that. So we would accept that as a completely simple answer. So what seemed like quite a complicated question, if I look at the question in the beginning, really isn't that bad. First, we dealt with the division, which is quite easy. We tipped our fractions and then we're allowed to multiply by that fraction if we tip it. And then all we had to do is factorize each algebraic expression before we could simplify. So it's quite nice. Now, exercise for this tutorial, if I was you, I'd stop the, the video right now, write down each of these questions, and then simplify each of them as much as you can. Good luck.